there's no DACA in it. I mean, Donald Trump sees that as a victory, and a lot of the Democrats and the, and the leftist base see that as a real loss because they've given up leverage once more. And by the way, it has a debt ceiling uh, clause in this, which is going to get the debt ceiling past November, so nobody can use a debt ceiling for leverage. And uh, th this is just a win for the White House. A win for the White House? I don't know. A win for America? No. Welcome, everybody. It's Chris Salcedo's show. Byron York is talking about this proposed Senate deal in the budget. It's a two-year deal at upspending already above its already irresponsible levels by $300 billion over two years. Some of it goes to our military. That's good. A lot of it goes to, quote-unquote, domestic programs. Domestic programs. And we're going to unpack this throughout the day. Uh, but I want, and, and you know what, Russell and I were talking and I said, you've been, you've been watching what's going on with the whole budget thing. He goes, no, man, I just can't get into it. And you know what? Russell represents about 95% of this country. And you know what? For me, it isn't the sexiest thing for me to cover. But is it the most important to the survivability of this country and making sure it's there for our children? Yes. Yes. The profligate spending that is happening in Washington, D.C. is ruinous. It, it More than Al-Qaeda, short of a nuclear detonation on our soil, it is probably the quickest way to the destruction of the United States that I can imagine. I heard a report yesterday, and I, I can't confirm the numbers, but they sound right to me. Russell... As a matter of fact, I'm going to make this a, I'm going to make this a question. I'll, I'll let you take a stab at it. Four hundred billion dollars at the beginning of every fiscal year is already spoken for. Before before we start talking about anything else in the federal budget, four hundred billion dollars is already spoken for. What what does that go to pay? Do you know, Russell? I haven't got a clue. What government program does that pay? 281-558-5738. 281-558-KSCB. We still have some uh, Liberty Rises books, right? We, as a matter of fact, we'll give away a prize. We'll give you a, we'll give you a, a Liberty Rises book, and, and Russell will go rummaging through the prize closet and see if we can, we can cobble together. Can you tell me what commitment this country has right off the bat every single fiscal year Four hundred billion dollars. Of uh, and, and, and remind you that our taxes are right around two and a half billion. I'm sorry, two and a half trillion dollars to three trillion dollars, mostly two and a half trillion uh, every single year. So four hundred billion of that is already spoken for before we start talking about any specifics in the federal budget. What is it? What spending item? Is that 2A1 I'll get to your calls here in a minute. Let me deal with what's going on with what Byron York is saying. Chuck Toomer got played. Chuck Toomer got outmaneuvered by President Trump and Mitch McConnell. So he gave up on this government shutdown, gave up on DACA. Byron York calls that a victory for the president because they're going to commit to doing DACA on a separate bill. You know what else they're going to do on a separate bill, ladies and gentlemen? Wall funding. Wall funding. In this budget, at least I can't find it. This budget agreement, there is no uh, specified spending on the wall. So it wasn't only the Democrats who were giving up leverage. And I want you to game play this out. Let's say we take up a DACA measure, a standalone. And Donald Trump stick to his four pillars. The wall, end of chain migration, end of the terrorist visa lottery, that border security. And the Democrats say no, no. And then they're going to turn around and blame Donald Trump for being unreasonable and keeping the DACA ki uh, kids, they're not kids anymore, but they were kids when they got here, in limbo. There is a significant portion of the Democrat Party that doesn't want to solve this issue. Why? Because it's a great campaign issue, they think, for them. And frankly, 
it's a good campaign issue for Donald Trump and Republicans. So what happens? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Status quo. Rampant illegal immigration. NFL football players being run down by drunken multiple time deportee felons who should not be here to begin with and countless other families across this nation whose whose families suffer, who lose loved ones at the hands of illegal aliens every single day, 365, 24-7. So, to Byron York's mind, oh, Trump won. You and I lost. The American people lost. And will continue to lose. We are already headed toward $1 trillion in deficit for this year. We talked about this with Stephen Moore yesterday. All of the extra money that will be created in a robust economy that's going to flow into the Treasury, it's already spent. Because these irresponsible children up on Capitol Hill have already spent our money on stupid, these these nebulous, failed domestic programs, which really don't improve our lives, by and large. The U.S. military does. I think, unless you're a left-wing anti-American extremist like Nancy Pelosi, we can all agree that our military serves us and is essential to the survival of this country. All the rest of the government spending, I, it's all up for debate. I would have told you I would have lumped in our intelligence agencies until recent revelations. And the agencies themselves are fine. It's the leadership that have screwed everything up. So I am a, I am a little more than perturbed that this government committed yesterday, committed you and me. By the way, I want you guys to look as you're do, remind yourself as you're doing your taxes this year. That's all. It's already gone. It's already spent. It's already flushed down the toilet to keep some bureaucrat rich. To keep somebody else's power going at your expense. This government is too big and it spends too much of our money on priorities that are not constitutionally mandated. Period. And I'll have words with anyone who disagrees. 281 558 KSEV. The question is, $400 billion at the beginning of every single fiscal year is already committed before we start even thinking about government programs of the military. What is it? Let's go out to Mike. Mike, welcome to the Chris Salcedo Show. Do you have the answer, sir? I think it's the interest on the debt, but I may be wrong about that. You are absolutely correct. That is the report that I heard right off the bat. Mike, you're going to get a copy of Liberty Rises, buddy. Um, Oh, thank you so much. Appreciate that. uh, Russell will will, uh, hang on afterward. And uh, you folks that are going away on on the phone lines, don't worry. I'm still going to talk to you because I still want to get your – I have a secondary question for all of you. Those of you who have been paying attention, Mike, I'm going to ask you this question as well. What do you think of this so-called – budget deal this budget win for the white house what do you think oh i don't think it's a win at all i i don't care about what's a win for the white house a win for the congress i care about what's a win for the american people and increasing the debt by the amount that we did plus the tax cut increased the deficit by 150 billion dollars a year which people don't think about is mortgaging mortgaging my kids and our kids and our nation's kids future uh because I... what that means what no, that means go ahead. is they're going to have to pay a 60 to 70 percent tax rate just to service the debt in 30 years. Mike, uh, you sound like you've been paying attention. And you know what? We have talked about this when we were debating the tax reform. Kevin Brady, Ted Cruz, other officials that have come on yesterday as, as late as late as yesterday. We were talking about this uh, with Stephen Moore saying all of it. And what, what is our mantra? All the tax cuts, all the reform in the world will be meaningless if this government does not cut its spending. And not only do we not get any cuts in spending, and I guess it's the Senate bill. Who knows what the House is going to come up with? But the Senate bill is so dang dear responsible, they tack on $300 billion more in spending 
on top of the already irresponsible spending they're doing. Now, granted, some of that's for the military, and I think we can all agree that's money well spent. The rest of it, I think, is up for debate. Well, Chris, I agree with you that money for the military is well spent. But I'm one of those economic conservatives that doesn't give the military a a pass. They're bloated. They overspend. They've got areas of pork that can be cut as well. No, I agree. But but this this austerity move that that uh, that happened with this this non this non thinking uh, uh, straight across the board 10 percent cut in in spending domestic and in the military that because the the grown ups or or that the children couldn't act like grown ups and budget that. I mean, we see the evidence about what's happening to our military. Yeah, the planes no are falling out. Of, about that. Planes are falling out of the sky. The ships can't sail, yeah. uh, and and now our servicemen are, and women are dying because they're not getting the, the hours of training they need. It's a well, our, I, I, elite militaries need uh, training. They need training. I couldn't agree with you more, and that's where we we need to prioritize our our military uh, spending and go and go after those fat cat contracts that get bloated that the taxpayers have to pay for. Because the defense contractors screw up. What about but prioritizing I, the spending in failed programs elsewhere in the budget? No, you cut them. You don't prioritize them. You no, cut no, no. Them. Divert. Okay, say you're spending money on some loser program. And by the way, I've got a list, Mike, of those loser programs coming up. Yes, you're, spe- you're, you're yeah. spending uh, $80 billion on a loser program that only benefits uh, elitists up on Capitol Hill. Take the money from that failed program that doesn't do the American people any good. And divert it to the military. Well, it will do some good. How about that? I agree with you 150%. Mike, you stay on the line. You stay on the line because Russell's going to get your... Can I say one? Mitch McConnell, you shouldn't even be in the Republican Party. You're not a majority leader. You're on the minority side. I'm tired of you. I, I, well, that's that's a good thing to end on right there. Mike, hang on. Don't hang up. The rest of you hang on as well. 281-558-5738. 281-558-KSEV. Don't let the whole DACA discussion go either, kids. This is this is going to be a problem because what what we have been set up for is a big knockdown drag out fight ahead of a 2018 election and nothing will get solved. I don't know about you. I'm tired of being played. Back in a minute, the Chris Nelsato Show on The Voice of Texas. Show the voice of Texas AM 700 KSEV. One of my favorite albums from Van Halen, right here. 2A1 558 KSEV is the phone number. The website KSEVradio.com. That's KSEVradio.com slash Chris Salcedo, S A L C E D O. Not only can you get caught up on what's happening with us, you know, via email, the old. You guys remember the, when email was new? Email's now the old-fashioned way. So if you uh, you want to do something else a little different other than email, do Twitter. It's all available there. You want to do Facebook. It's all available right there. Again, ksebradio.com slash Chris Salcedo. Let's get out of the phones. Fred, welcome to the Chris Salcedo Show. Good morning, Chris. How are you? I'm doing well, sir. Well, I, you know what? I was doing well yesterday until I saw this so-called victory on the budget. Yes, I'm good. Uh, which it certainly is not. Get, get, getting back to your, your your question, it might cover a lot of it, but it's something like eighty something percent is committed already. It's 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 interest on the debt, Medicare and Medicaid. Yeah. And even those programs are going broke. Another over the next ten or fifteen years is going to be no money for those. That comes even more quickly, given that the uh, the our interest rates are being held artificially low. You know what? I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because what happens when the interest rate just ticks up a half basis point or a full basis point? What is that going to do to America's ability to finance our debt, our massive debt? You know, I said four hundred billion dollars already committed 
with an interest rate hike, folks, up by a point, that number is going to skyrocket. And then, and then up toward a trillion dollars in interest alone. That's before you and I pay on anything else this irresponsible government is already telling us we have to pay for. Which means we basically will be out of money for everything else. I mean, it comes back to the same point. You've got to cut spending. Nobody seems to want to talk about that. Also, by the way, there's those, the unfunded liabilities of her $200 trillion. Oh, yeah, don't even there's get no me started. I know there's, no, there's nothing there's no, there. There's nothing there. There's nothing there. So where is, and this is what bothers me, nobody is talking about this. I mean, I think starting with the president, I mean, he's the one I would say first. He's got the bully pulpit. Well, he's got to go look. When Somebody was the last time you saw Donald bully. Trump give a damn about spending? When was the last time you saw that? I mean, he um, spent he spent the campaign. He spent the campaign saying, I don't want to cut anything. I don't want to cut it. What, what are you out of your mind? When, I, when he said a $1 trillion, <clears throat> trillion dollar infrastructure project, my only thought was, it's a trillion dollars more debt. Well, exactly. Yeah. It, but you know what? I've got to give him credit on that. He he recognizes that that can't all be financed with a big paycheck. And we talk about this. Who, who do we have on the program? I remember asking somebody about this, about this particular. Actually, it was with um, Hogan Gidley, the deputy press secretary. This is not going to be your typical Washington writes a check for $1.5 trillion. It's going to be a state, federal, uh, private partnership in getting some of this stuff done. As a matter of fact, I've heard a dollar figure as low as $200 billion of federal commitment to that $1.5 trillion uh, that is being committed for infrastructure. Okay. That, that's I mean, that's if, what I've heard. If there's, if there's a way to realistically fund that or, or you know, get that program to pay for itself, that's all great. But well, well, wait a minute. Even the even the, problem. even the two hundred billion isn't. It, we still don't have that. I mean, anything yeah, that we change. spend over the over what we are doing now is money we don't have because we're already spending money right now that we don't yeah. have. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Regardless of that one individual program, we're running out of money. There we're is running a, out of money. Spending there, has to be cut. I'm going to introduce you. Uh, by the way, I hope you can stick around. And, and listen to the next hour because we're going to get into this in detail. But there's something I want. There's a term I want you all to know. It's called high risk of failure. And this is something that's done by the Government Accountability Office about government programs. In essence, failed government programs that are insolvent. There are as of 2015, there are 32 federal programs. They do these reports every other year. So the 2017 report just came out. Nobody's done a, a synopsis or a write up. So we're going to use 2015 as the basis, and then we're going to tell you it got worse in 2017. Thanks for the call, man. I appreciate it. 281-558-5738, 281-558-KSEV. Louie, welcome to the Chris Salcedo Show. What say you? I mean, you, you know, I woke up this morning, and the first thing I heard your voice, you scared the heck out of me because I'm telling you, this is very, very uh, dangerous where we're heading. You should be and scared. You should them, be scared. Them, yeah, the military has been held host, hostage because that's the only line of defense we have. That if we could have that wall built and the military rebuild the military, we we need to get back and and you know get the military back to at least four hundred ships. And the problem that we're facing is that China is getting very strong and the Russians and the, and the Britain are hitting us. People don't know what's going on because the media covers up everything. And the other thing, if I were to ask you how much money do we spend yearly? Between the illegals that are getting welfare and getting sending money and all the health care that they get for free, that the taxpayer, whoever is still struggling out there, have to pay for. And then between the illegals and between and between the people here in the United States that are on welfare and some kind of a, a handout program, Social Security is broke. Everything is broke. I don't know. And, and we can't borrow money. Like he just said, like the gentleman just said, we cannot borrow anymore. So we are in big trouble. And well, if the no. Democrat takes the House and the Senate in this in a few months, we're we're really going to head on back to the the fall of the Soviet Union. That's what's going to be the fall. Everything of you said there, Louis, was correct, except for the point where you said we can't borrow anymore. No, there there are bad actors, China, uh, and other bad actors who are financing our debt, realizing that our profligate spending is the quickest way to our downfall. So they're financing it. The, the Chinese are loaning us money. Why? Because they know how reckless and irresponsible it is. And this is why I believe there are elements in our government who and, are. And, and the reason, and well, the reason if I could be allowed are, to finish my sentence, yeah, there, there are I'm, there are elements in our government 
who are committed to basically transitioning the United States out of a world leadership role and transitioning it to the Chinese. And what happens when that happens, Louis? We lose our reserve currency status. The, the world no longer trades in dollars. They start trading in Chinese currency. And then all of a sudden, we're using wheelbarrows to go buy groceries with, with, ca- with ca- worthless cash. Exactly what happened in Germany in 1936. People don't understand history. Now, I hope this president, Donald Trump, knows this. Unless he just don't care and he's going to follow through like He doesn't. He doesn't know it. He doesn't care. He doesn't know. He doesn't care. Nope. Another thing. The reason we haven't been attacked yet is because the Russian and the Chinese know that we are so divided that, that, that we're becoming, I mean, alone on drugs alone, we got our, our, our children, future, they're all infected with drugs. And they're grown up taking drugs and doing all kinds of drugs while they, the children are doing the same thing. Well, so Louis, we are destroying within ourselves. Well, we're all going to have to, we're all going to have to be on drugs because when it all happens, that's probably the, yeah. the only way it's going to be, it's going to be uh, pain. Well, you're not going to feel the immense pain because when it all comes, when it all comes down and the whole country goes insolvent, and I'm not the only one who's saying this, when the whole country goes insolvent, then uh, you're going to need those drugs. Hey, Louie, I got to scoot. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. 2A1-558-5738. 2A1-558. KSEV. John, I wanted to get your call in here really quickly because you're talking about the U.S. military. Uh, yes, sir. I, I don't think we're not spending nearly enough because, because if you look at the Chinese buildup, uh, we are just not spending anything on the Navy. Uh, we need to uh, prepare to have at least two or three additional carrier groups that we have not funded or prepared for because we will lose a massive amount of resources trying to take these artificial islands that have been built. I've went and seen in overseas in Malaysia where the Chinese are building bases and you don't even hear about that. He's talking now, about the folks. He's talking about the South China Sea, the the the, the Woodward Islands, or the Woodward Islands, they call them. Yeah, and the, all around the Sprat and the Spratleys and the everything. Spratleys, yeah. And, uh, and, and they, uh, the Chinese have, are putting bases in eastern Malaysia. Yeah, John, uh, how, many ships, how many ships does America have right now? We're, we're under 300 ships. We're under 300 ships. How much and do I, we need with the, gross, the, the growing, rising threats of terrorism, of the, the North Koreans, the Chinese, and the Russians? We need at least a ship fleet size of 400 or above. To get oh, any, we need we need we need at least five hundred ships because we'll, yep. in the first uh, leg of combat, we, we I would expect we'd lose at least a carrier group. John, thank you very much, man. I appreciate it. Great call. Back in a minute, folks. Hour two starts next on the Voice. It is a debt junkie's wildest dream. With all the spending of money that we don't have, we have to borrow to get, and we can't afford to pay back. And you can see that already reflected in the credit markets, where we're going to embark on an unending stream of trillion dollar or more annual deficits, that's money taken out of the credit markets, money that's no longer there that drives up interest rates. It, it is unfathomable to me that we want to bankrupt a country that it took centuries of our ancestors to build, but this legislation goes a long ways towards bringing about an American, an American debilitating insolvency and bankruptcy, and I'm shocked at how bad and financially irresponsible this piece of legislation is. That's Mo Brooks, the guy who should have been the senator from Alabama. Congressman Mo Brooks uh, describing to you this di- this deal. Uh, keep in mind, your federal government is already on track to overspend to the tune of eh, right around nine hundred billion dollars this fiscal year. So here comes Chuck Toomer and Mitch McConnell saying, "Hey, let's spend more like we got it," to the tune of. Well, let's call it $150 billion for this year and $150 billion for next. Uh, It's going to the military, some of it, which is deserved, which I'm happy about. But this is, you see, this is the type of childish, irresponsible spending that we have to purchase the, the right type of spending Because if the military doesn't exist, the country doesn't exist, right? So the Democrats say, well, if you want to protect the country, we're going to need a whole bunch of failed government programs that we can skim off the top, enrich ourselves, uh, buy political patronage using the, the taxpayer's money, and a bunch of failed government programs. And a lot of them are failed. And I'm going to detail some of those coming up. But Mo Brooks wasn't done talking to Cavuto. 
over on Fox Business. He had much more to say about where this country is headed. And I know this isn't the most sexy of topics. I know you're all probably going, oh my gosh, you know, could it be this bad? Yes, it can be. Mo Brooks, folks. Listen. The economics are simple. If Fox were to borrow about 25% of its operational costs each and every year, before long, Neil, you'd be out of a job because Fox would be out of business. Same thing with family. The economics are same for a country. People need to start looking at what's going on in Venezuela to see how bad it is when a central government goes into insolvency and bankruptcy. Now, you understand what he means. And Reagan, for a time, had mentioned this, that you and I can for a short period of time live beyond our means by borrowing. And there's nothing that says you can't go out and have that Cadillac. Put it on credit and you can enjoy it until the the, the time comes to pay for it. This government, the federal government, does not pay for things. They never have to deal with a day where they have to pay the piper. At least that's what they think. It will come. If this fiscal irresponsibility comes, they're going to have to pay for their Cadillacs. More to the point, you and I will have to pay for their Cadillacs. Let me give you an example of a federal program that needs to go away. Freddie Mae and Fannie Mac, uh, Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, the lending institutions. These are called government-sponsored enterprises. And what these socialist pieces of garbage do is they privatize profit and they socialize loss. Let me explain that for those of you who don't have financial backgrounds. Let's say you get into a deal where 10 of your friends get in there, into a deal, in, into business. They put in their money, you put in your money, and if the business turns a profit... You get all the money, all the profit. Your other nine investors or 10 investors, they get nothing, absolutely nothing. Maybe they get, maybe they get an opportunity to use the products in your business. Maybe. Now, let's say you all did that. You all put in your investment and then the business loses money. Well, then you and your investors, they all have to pony up money for the loss. That is a loser proposition for the American people. But they exist in this government. They are getting financed in this government with your money. This is, that's just one example of the stupidity, the unaccountability, the vast, massive bureaucracy that the federal government has turned into. And we have said this before, and I will say it again, and if you have never heard it before, or if you've dismissed it before, listen now. The government is too big and spends too much. 535 representatives and senators haven't a prayer of properly administering and overseeing a government this big. Heck, our intelligence agencies prove that right away, don't they? So understand that these people, they are so childlike, they can't agree what to cut. So what do they do? They agree to irresponsible spending. That's what Chuck Toomer and Mitchell McConnell did. Well, we can't agree on what to cut, so we're going to agree to spend more. What? How is that good for the country? Oh, and we get by a debt ceiling increase too. Oh, perfect. Perfect. A loss of another chance to rein in government spending. They they included the uh, the debt ceiling in this budget deal too, so we don't have to deal with the politics. Oh, give me a break! In other words, we are making sure we can't be held accountable. We're going to spend it. Then Chris Salcedo show and Rush Limbaugh and Sean and. Uh, all in Lance and everybody out they're gonna they're gonna move on. And everybody will forget how much of their children's future we're mortgaging. Everybody's gonna forget. That's what they're banking on. This show 
and I know Lance was on this too, but this show, while we were debating tax reform, how many times did we pivot the discussion back to spending cuts, spending cuts? When will this government get serious about spending cuts? All of the tax reform and tax cutting in the world will be meaningless if the country's insolvent. Recently, 800%, 800% inflation rate in Venezuela. Is that where we want to take the United States of America with an insolvency of our central government? That's where we're headed. That's where we're headed. Oh, that could never happen. Just look at Venezuela. The next time some fool tells you this, oh, well, that could never happen. Yeah, they thought the same thing in oil-rich Venezuela just 20 years ago. They were the crown jewel of Central America. Now look at them. This is what socialism does. This is what massive government power and centralized governing power does. Look at it. Oh, that'll never happen here. That is the most ignorant statement that I think the left utters. And unfortunately, an alarming number of people on the right. Uh, recently, over a 12-month period of time, 75% of the Venezuelan population suffered an average weight loss of 19 pounds because they can't get the food, the calories to sustain their body weight. Nurses and teachers are going across the border into Colombia, setting up houses of prostitution, earning money that way, then buying food in Colombia and hiring mules to carry the food back to their kids in Venezuela so they don't starve. Chuck Toomer and Mitch McConnell's vision for America, folks. Your wives, your daughters having to prostitute themselves just to make ends meet. Professionals, how, how, how would you like your, what, what, what does your wife do for a living, gentlemen? What do your daughters do for a living, gentlemen? Maybe they're uh, in the executive suite. Maybe they run uh, large, medium, or small businesses. Uh, th- th- by the way, for all of you who say, oh, it could never happen here. This is happening right now. Happening right now. Venezuela didn't always used to be this way. You know who won down there? Idiots. Leftists. Socialists. They won in Venezuela. Look where they are. Is this this the future we want? Mitch McConnell and Chuck Toomer have paved the way for America to go right down this failed road. And we know it's failed because every nation state that has gone down this road has failed. And they refuse to turn around. Uh, Because we don't want to have a political fight. (laughs) Then get the heck out of politics. You don't want to have a political fight. Step aside. Go away. We can't afford you. Is that where we want to take the United States of America? Again, this, this idea that we have unlimited amounts of money that we can borrow, it's a fiction, it's dangerous, and it needs to stop here. Yeah, I agree. But it won't. You know why? Because you have Chuck Toomer and Mitch McConnell behind the, behind the scenes shaking hands. Oh, yeah. We're going to drive America into further debt and deficits. Because it's just too hard to be responsible. I don't know, man. And if it was just Chuck Toomer and it was just Mitch McConnell's family who were going to lose, I'd say let them do it all day long. But they're making decisions on behalf of our families. And that's when it gets real personal for me. 281-558-5738. 281-558-KSEV. Here's a question. How many of you in this audience even care about what I just laid out? How many of you are going to go, oh, well, whatever. Go grab that Starbucks latte. When do you get serious about holding these so-called leaders accountable? Accountability, that's our theme this year. Back in a minute, the Chris Salcedo Show on The Voice. Welcome back, everybody. It's Chris Salcedo Show. I'm going to get to your calls here in a minute. Uh, Do not hang up because I want you guys to hear this before we get out of the phones. Uh, Let me pull this up. 
There's a couple of stories I pulled up yesterday. I told you guys about something called high risk failure. This is a designation given to the federal government by the Government Accountability Office. Now, I've put these posts up on the Chris Salcedo Show Facebook page so you guys can reference this stuff. All right. I've, I've actually been in touch with the GAO and asked them for some more information on the 2017 report. I'm going to read to you from the 2015 report. And I'll tell you, 2017 is worse. Okay? The Government Accountability Office added two more federal programs to high-risk list in the report released this week, bringing the total up to 32. 32 government programs are deemed high-risk. Uh... By the way, that is worse. That it is now up to 36. There have been four more added since 2015. I think that's a net four because one dropped off. Those high-risk programs are the ones the GAO deems to be extremely vulnerable to fraud, waste, abuse, and mismanagement, putting billions of taxpayer dollars at risk. The two new high-risk programs include VA health care, which has been found to be plagued with fraud, mismanagement, and federal IT acquisitions. You know, like the Democrats, they pay foreign agents to be their IT people. Anyway, since President Obama came into office promising to run government more effectively and responsibly, the GAO has added nine programs to its high-risk list. This is the danger of electing Democrats. The 300 plus page report provides a depressing litany of just how massive and how ineptly run the federal government is. And folks, the reason why it's ineptly run is because it's too big. No, it's too big to be administered. It's too big to provide oversight. It's too big. But your elected leaders feel that the government runs them now, not the other way around. And we're supposed to be running our leaders, not the other way around. The GAO notes, for example, the federal government spends a jaw-dropping $80 billion each year on IT investment and that they too frequently fail or incur cost overruns and schedule slippages while contributing little to mission-related outcomes. So basically all you're doing is padding the pockets of some campaign donor in the, in the, uh, the tech world in particular in the era of Obama. Silicon Valley, it gets $80 billion of your taxpayer money, which does little or nothing to benefit you. But Barack Obama needed to pay back his cronies. Another example, the IRS pays $5.8 billion in fraudulent refunds each year. 5.8. So let's round it up to $6 billion. Medicare wastes $60 billion a year in improper payments to doctors and hospitals. So that's $66 billion we're up to. Medicaid made $18 billion in improper payments last year. (laughs) The first year of Obamacare's massive expansion of the program, that's a 22% increase from the year before. The U.S. Postal Service piled up $10.5 billion in net losses over the past two years, even though it's required to balance the books. So let me break out the calculator. And that's over two years, so I can only take half of that. Let's go 6 plus 60 plus 18 plus 5. That's $89 billion in just five examples of the 32 High risk in 2015, and there are more now in 2017. $89 billion. Put that on top of the $400 billion, and that's a conservative estimate, folks, that you and I are on the hook just to pay the interest in the national debt. And you start to see why the picture is so glum and why we can't afford irresponsible governance right now. Keep this in mind, ladies and gentlemen, as we're coming into the primaries. Is your elected leader in your district part of the solution or part of the problem? And I guarantee you, if they're a Democrat, they are part of the problem. And it's a 50-50 toss-up as whether or not they're part of the problem if they're a Republican. $89 billion, Just five programs that I outlined of the 32. So, 
there's that. Let me get your comments and your concerns, your questions. Mark, welcome to the Chris Salcedo Show. I'm glad you waited. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, that $80 billion in relief for, um, for these disasters is a slap in the face of every Houstonian and every Texan because we know, even Judge Emmett and, and the mayor and other county officials said just this city alone and the surrounding counties went through $120 billion in damage. And Cornyn and Cruz put their hats on and got $80 billion to be shared amongst four states. That, my friend, is a slap in the face. And, I, and anybody that says, oh, but that price is too high, I mean, that's, that's a lot of money, Mark. Well, guess what? That, at what cost for the next one? It'll make that price look like pittance. And that is a slap in our face. I suggest everybody get on the horn and get to their rep in this in this uh, city and let them know that's unacceptable. That disaster relief should have been well over 160 billion dollars, and at least half of it coming right here. And where would and where but, would you suggest it come from? Well, let's look at what the Army Corps of Engineers said in 1996. No, 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 no. The, the question, no, 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 no. no, no. no I want, I want said, you to tell me where do you think the 160 billion dollars ought to come from? Where do you think it's going to come from? I'm asking you. Well, where do you think? If it's a federal disaster relief, where do you think that money's coming from? From the federal government. So where, point, so exactly. where do you think we ought to pull that? Where do you think we should that be? placed on the credit card to give to Houston, or should we find it someplace else? Well, let's look at the $1.5 trillion tax cuts. Is, is, it, on, is, this thing, is, this, is this thing on? Hello. Uh, where do you uh, think yeah. we, ought to, we, ought to, we ought to pull that money from? Should it be on the credit card, or should it come from someplace else in government? Absolutely. One of the two, because let me tell you what the price, what the cost will be if we don't. It'll uh, make the price, what you're talking about, Look like nothing because the Army no. Corps of Engineers has spelled out what we need done down here. The flood mitigation is a serious threat to everybody's livelihood down here. I agree. If you think, if you think Harvey was bad, just wait. Even Emmett and the uh, Army Corps of Engineers said we lucked out. So do you think? So, so Mark, let me ask you this: Do you favor an increasing the bur- the tax burden on your fellow citizens to bring that money here, or do you favor on demanding efficiencies? In the in the wasted, and I just detailed with five programs, nearly ninety billion dollars of waste with the federal government's programs. Would you recommend that we we pare down this government, make it smaller, so that we can actually have money for this type of disaster relief? I'm always about smarter government. I don't care about the size of it, but I do well, want smarter government. Now, what so I wait a minute. You, don't, you say you don't hold we, on. We, you don't we, you we, don't we, care we, about the size. You say you don't care about the size. But if it's too big that you can't oversee it and administer it and be fiscally responsible, why wouldn't you care about the size? I do want a proper government because flood mitigation down no, that here. That wasn't my question. Why wouldn't we you care about this. the size? Why we, wouldn't you care about the size? Flood, but flood mitigation down here is this is thing on? Hello. I, I mean, maybe I'm not. Maybe this. Yeah, yeah. Let, we were talking, I'm Mark. Talking about flood Mark. Mitigation down here. No, I, I'm talking about the responsible government. I'm talking about responsible time. government. So uh, let me ask you one more. Let me ask you one more time. Because you said that you didn't care about the size of the government. If the government is too big to where it cannot have proper oversight and not be properly administered, how can you contend that you don't care about the size of government? Okay, let's make it smaller and let's move on. What I'd like to see is flood mitigation down here. That $80 billion that Uh they're putting down here is is a pittance for what we need down here. No, you've already said that. You've already said right, that. Right, and we need that. We need to stay focused and get on the horn, call your representative, call Ted Poe, let them know this is going into there. That should be doubled. And we and the, cit- the citizens of this city and the county demand Well, wait a minute. Mark, them. Mark, you, I, you, you have already stated that this, this is what you've in effect said. I want the money. It needs to be bigger. Mm-hmm. But don't bother me with the details of how you're going to pay for it. I just want the money. That's exactly what you've said. Isn't that irresponsible? No, I want can look at the Army Corps of Engineer and look at their report in 1996. I know what the report forward, says. I, I know that. I understand that, but a game plan. You're I'm st- giving you a game plan. You're asking me to give you some details, which I am. I'm saying let's increase the money. Let's go to the Army Corps of Engineers. Let's let <laughs> them detail out what we need done in order to survive the next major catastrophe. Right. And let's get and let's get moving. 
moving. I'm not saying let this. Uh, That's deep. Whoa, 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 whoa. Get moving is detail. Mark, l- l- let me suggest. Here's what I'm hearing. Let's go to the Army Corps of Engineers. They they tell us what they need. We, we write them a blank check, and I don't give a damn where it comes from. And I don't care how many Amer- fellow Americans I got to screw to get it. That's what I'm hearing, Mark. There's got, there's, there's got to be another process in there in which you say, well, either I'm going to irresponsibly raise taxes on my fellow Americans, I'm going to demand efficiencies from my government and make it smaller, or there, there, there's an option three, we borrow it from China. Tell me what you want to do. Just sit there and say, we, I need, I need. There are a lot of needs around this, around this country that aren't getting addressed. But it seems all of Washington's wants are getting paid for first. Back in a minute, the Chris Alcedo Show on The Voice of Texas. Saying, I want, I want, I want, I want, got us into the mess that we're in right now with a bunch of irresponsible children up on Capitol Hill. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. I can come up with reports all day long about what this region needs, that region needs. That Fantastic. Does it necessarily mean that we must either A, raise taxes or B, put it on the credit card? No. The American people have got to start demanding accountability in Washington. We, Folks, every let, let, me, let me put this back to Mark, and I know he's probably still listening. What good is it going to do to fix the flooding in Houston if the country fails? What, what good is that going to do? And, and let's, remember what Mo Brooks was just telling us. It is a debt junkie's wildest dream with all the spending of money that we don't have we have to borrow to get, and we can't afford to pay back. And who are we going to, who are borrowing this from? The chai the communist Chinese. Come on, folks. It's time to wake up. The government is too big and spends too much. And the federal government, that's their responsibility. What about Sylvester Turner's worthless rear end? I mean, all he does is stick his hand out. Oh, pay for, you know, give, give me money, give me money from the federal government. What about better administering in local government? So maybe we have some money to throw at this flooding problem. But granted, I know that we it's a it's a pretty big lift to happen just just with local money. But a combination of local, federal and state money could get it done. It's like this this public, private, state, federal government partnership that the president is starting to put together for infrastructure repair. It's not going to be the federal government, we're told anyway. It's not going to be the federal government writing a $1.5 trillion check. It's going to be the federal government working with states so they can pay their fair share for their citizens. And those, for example, the businesses of Houston. Let's just take take the flooding mitigation issue right here in Houston. The state of Texas will get involved by the Trump vision. Local businesses will get involved. And the federal government will pony up some money too. But not just write a check for $1.5 trillion because, and Mark, I'm picking on you because you gave voice to a lot of these irresponsible governing people. I want, I want, I want, I want. Give it to me. Do you understand the words that are coming out of my mouth? (laughs) That was Russ. That wasn't me. That was Russell. (laughs) Such a big fool you are. Such a big fool. <laughs> Such a big fool. 281 558 KSEV. Hey, Lewis. Welcome to Chris Salcedo Show. Hey, what's going on? Hey, Lewis, I can barely hear you. Are you like. Are oh, you? I'm sorry. There you uh, go. I wanted Hi. to bring up two things. Uh, one thing we talked about, which has to do with Congress, which is our big problem, and I think I have the solution. One was the other day I called in, and we, it was before the the budget deal and they were going to shut down the government and I had called up and complained that Congress was the only people that got paid. True. And 
you said, well, that's because they declared themselves essential, correct? Correct. Correct. Well, now, are there different classifications of essential? Because the military is essential and they don't get paid. Border Patrol is essential and they don't get paid. So what, what is there now? Is there essential essential and essential non-essential? Look. How does that work? When, when, you've, got, when you've got the governing class making the rules, Lewis, and they don't yeah, listen well, to we the people, the, I mean, I think we, I what think are you going to do? To start complain, I think we need to start complaining about that and calling our congressmen and then telling them that we don't like it. Number two that I want to t- tell you real quick, I think the way the problem that we have is that we switched the Senate or senators to be voted by the electorate when it should have been left as it was and been appointed by the state government. I agree one That's where we thousand percent up because now we politicize the Senate. They don't take care of the business of the state. They take care of the business of their special interests. Amen. That's Amen. where we messed up. Yeah, exactly. We screwed with the plan and it screwed everything up. Yeah, that, uh, that, that, anyway. is one, that is one issue, you know, what? Who, who's done a lot of good work on that, uh, the Liberty Amendments, Mark Levin's book. And yeah. uh, we have been a big proponent after a convention of the states is called and we, we pass a balanced budget amendment. After that's done, the next thing we look at is either term limits or repealing of the 17th Amendment. Right. Oh, the other thing about, about Mark real quick is let me, let me just say one thing to Mark. Let me say Houstonians have known about that they live in a stinking hurricane zone for the last hundred years. And what have they done? They've poured concrete like there was no tomorrow, no <laughs> planning, no zoning, no nothing. And then they want the government to come and bail them out of their stupidity. Well, it, it, it's, uh, it's like the, the entire city of Houston has been run by Governor Ray or by uh, Mayor Ray Nagin. <laughs> remember yeah. remember yeah. Ray Nagin? He was the he yeah. was the, the brilliant uh, piece of work in his so-called chocolate city who left the buses there. Yeah. And you, well, you know no, what? And, you know what? And let's not forget, it was Mayor Turner who was during the as the storm was bearing down on the city of Houston, saying, "Oh, it's not going to be. It's not going to be what is it? Ninety inches or anything like that." He was he was downplaying the impact of the biggest storm to hit this area in in in, in on record, and the biggest storm to hit the United States on record. He was downplaying it right up until the rain started falling, and then it was oh my gosh, and then it was oh let's let's not look behind us, let's not get into recriminations. No, look, it was it was yeah. the genius let's Mayor not look Turner. At my stupidity. Well, there you go. Well, and, you know, this this genius Mayor Turner is continuing us right down the same road, Lewis, of not paying oh, well. attention, and he's saying it's the federal government's responsibility. I'm not responsible. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. You know what? Right. And when you when you get Democrats, Lewis, that's the kind of governance you get. Thank you very much for the call, man. I appreciate it. Uh, 2A1-558-5738. 2A1-558-KSEV. Willie, welcome to Chris Salcedo's show. What's on your mind, bud? Good budget. But, Chris, Republicans do it, too, not just Democrats. And you say it over and over again. I'm going to correct you every time. Republicans do it, too. You was, Mark, you was right when you told Mark. Where are we going to get the money from? Right. You, Chris, and all Republicans. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I, did, I didn't say that. You I, ain't let me finish. I know, but you, but again, you've said that I didn't that I didn't blame Republicans. I said I can guarantee you that w- nearly 100% of Democrats are part of the problem and 50% of, of the Republicans are the problem. I can Why guarantee you. Why ain't 90% of the Republicans? Why ain't 90% be, be, Because I believe that the, the demographic makeup in the Republican Party, on a, and this is a rough estimate, I believe there are fiscal conservatives inside of the Republican Party, about half of the Republican Party. Five of them, five, five. I'm going to tell you what I mean, Chris. All right, go the ahead. of this government is Republican, but you keep talking like Democrats are running it. Let me uh, get to my point. Uh, All these people voted for this tax deal, and we talking about fiscal responsible, uh, added $2.3 trillion to the debt. Where are we getting that money from? Did you ask that question? No, but all you guys were for it. Now they've been a plan of a continued revolution. These so-called physical responsibility Republicans. I'm going to tell you what we need to do. What we need to do, Chris. I'm ready to do it when you're ready. We need to turn on the Democrats, and we need to turn on all the Republicans, too, and take the government back from all of them. All of them. Stop just blaming the leadership. Leadership just one vote on these bills. This government is put, uh, uh, putting us in debt. Not just one person, not just the leadership. All of them people is putting us in debt, man. We need to start saying that. We need to focus our energy on this whole government. Not just this party, not just this party. Everybody wants one for office. Even the Ted Cruz, he 
you voted for it too. If you're not physical and responsible, Chris, I don't care who they are in Texas, I don't care if they're in California, if they vote for a bill and not physical and responsible, we need to kick their butt out of office every time. And we don't have the guts to do it. And now we got to start blaming the voters for what happened in this country. What did you think about that? I, I don't find a lot of what you said objectionable. And as a matter of fact, I started out the program, it was probably a little early, before you actually tuned in, and basically said that Republicans and Democrats joined hands and screwed us yesterday. So maybe you missed that part, but that's okay. It's also on the Chris Salcedo Show Facebook page. Willie, I appreciate the call as always. 281-558-5738, 281-558-KSCV. I've got some more sound bites. The political pundit class weighing in on all of this yesterday. I'll let you hear their take. We've already heard from Byron York. And Nancy Pelosi took to the the House floor and gave an historic speech. Nancy Pelosi, the leader of the Democrats in the House of Representatives, passionate, passionate about standing up for illegal aliens in this country. Back in a minute, the Chris Salcedo Show on The Voice. And that's going to do it here for the Chris Salcedo Show worldwide on the Vita Television Network. I want to remind everyone that I think I'm one of the few individuals on television who actually allows you to directly interact with me unfiltered live. All you got to do is call AM 700 KSEV 281-558-5738, 281-558-KSEV from the hours of 730 AM Eastern until 10 o'clock Eastern and let your voice be heard. Maybe you don't think we covered something fairly or maybe you don't think we've covered something enough. It's your chance to weigh in. You can also do so via social media. Go to chrissalcedo.com. All of our contact information is there. Or you can do it live in real time during those same hours at Chris Salcedo TX. Even off hours, we respond to Twitter. And it's a good chance if you make a compelling argument, it'll be featured on the show if I'm not on the air at the time the following day. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Chris Salcedo Show Worldwide here on the Vita Television Network. We'll see you next time.